Now, for our second webinar, we have Dr. Irene Esteves Amador, whom I have the absolute pleasure of introducing to you all fine people. Uh, Dr. Irene Esteves Amador is an art historian and conservator who teaches at the university level. She's a pioneer in conservation and documentation practices in the Caribbean, and she's the author to the book Conservation Through Documentation, Mirna Baez, The Artist and Her Voice, The Preservation of Contemporary Art Through the Artist Interview, published by Isla Negra Editores. She is the Ana Gemendez University Gurabo Campus Museums Director and Fundación Ángel Ramos Art Exhibition Galleries Coordinator. At the present time, Dr. Esteves Amador is also the Mineral Collections Artist Documentation Program Fellow as part of a collaboration with the Whitney Museum of American Art. Dr. Esteves, for me, is an absolute pleasure and an honor to introduce you. Uh, please, whenever you're ready, the stage is all yours. Hello. Thank you, gracias, for such a kind introduction. As Ana Jimenez University Museum Director, it is an honor to be one of the hosting institutions of this prestigious international event. I'd like to congratulate Arts Electronica organizers and the participating artists. And I'd like to also thank the Puerto Rico Science, Technology and Research Trust and Dr. Johnny Lugo, its Cultural Innovation Program di Director for this kind, uh, generous and exciting invitation. Well, I'd like uh, to take this opportunity and I'll start sharing my, my presentation, my webinar presentation now. Well, I would like to take this opportunity to talk to you about a most treasured project, the Proyecto de Documentación de Artistas Latinoamericanos or Latin American Artist Documentation Project, also known as PEDAL, which when pronounced in Spanish, means pedal. Pedal is the consequence of my doctoral research and dissertation in painting conservation. It seeks to rescue the artist's voice in order to better understand and preserve their legacy. As a result of early 20th century artistic experimentation, its methodology brings forward the documentation of experimental and new media art and also the design of digital registry tools that empower artists, since they are the first ones to come into contact with what they make and we want to help preserve. This webinar will offer an introduction to the Latin American Documentation Project in the context of this museum and campus where we are transmitting from today and a demonstration of the Registro de Arte Contemporáneo, RAC, or Contemporary Art Registry Tool Prototype, a digital questionnaire designed for artists and or their close associates. I hope that this interests you and that it is beneficial to your practice. Well, this is the Museo y Centro de Estudios Humanísticos, Dr. Josefina Camacho de la Nuez, and Diana Jemendez Gurabo Campus, which is now the house of um, Pedal. The museum is located at what was formerly a sugar cane plantation in a very lush uh, property in the Valle del Turao, surrounded by uh, mountains and even a river uh, runs by the the museum actually behind the, the museum. The museum dates back uh, to 1981. So it turns 40 years old this year. 
and was originally housed in a wooden structure that was part of the plantation. Today, as you can see, it is housed uh, in a modern building. It has around 14 years old and it is considered an eco museum. So now the, the museum is heading towards the convergence between the arts and the science. And when we talk about conservation and restoration, it is precisely that. Um, it's that intercrossing between the arts and the sciences. So the museum has embraced the stream plus H motto, if you want to call it that, which stands for science, technology, research, engineering, arts, math, and, and health. So we started by uh, taking that which already existed, which was part of the museum and is valuable, got valuable. And we decided to give it a twist. So the first thing we have done is to transform the Artists in Residence program, which is, in my opinion, one of the museums and the universities. Uh, jewels. And our current artist in residence, Carola Sintromoscoso, who's also participating in Ars Electronica this, this year, um, is better known as a conceptual artist for working with sound. She's a sound artist and she deals with technology uh, a lot. This is a piece she made where she brought in the sounds, the natural sounds of the uh, campus and translated other sounds that are artificial ones using the coordinates from different European cities. And she established that dialogue between what's further away in Europe with what's happening in our immediate surroundings. And the result is fascinating because it makes you think about a train that's starting to move and suddenly you get to hear these birds. And this is Carola inside that museum uh, gallery. This is a window and you can see through the window one of those uh, original wooden structures from the Hacienda. This is actually the, the chancellor's office. Another important um, effort moving towards that embracing of technology and science is the recent acquisition of the e-museum software, which is allowing us to digitally registry or register and upload to the web, to the internet, the museum's whole collection, which is around 5,000 objects. And this is very groundbreaking for us, especially in this pandemic times, uh, the museum has just reopened to the public. We were closed, physically closed for more than a year. And e-museum signifies the opportunity to give access to everyone uh, via the internet in any part of, of the world where, where, they, where they have internet connection, right? Um, to give them access to our objects, to our collection, and also allow our audience to um, even make their own selection for exhibition purposes, develop their, their own uh, virtual and digital exhibition shows with our with the objects of our collection. Another um, important effort towards this end is the transformation of what was formerly the museum's education hall into a stream plus age lab and also an, a creative arts incubator. Um, in the not so near future, we also hope and expect that this space becomes the pilot project for the Sustainable Conservation Center for the Caribbean region, which is uh, a, collaboration, a collaboration we, we expect to achieve with the Puerto Rico Science uh, Trust. For now, this Stream Plus H, H Lab is, ho is hosting um, what I want to, to talk to you mainly about, which is PEDAL, the Proyecto de Documentación de Artistas Latinoamericanos. So 
first thing I want to point out about Fedal is its premise. And its premise is that we acknowledge Latin American contemporary art worth, and not just contemporary Latin American art, but even modern Latin American art dating back uh, previously uh, to the 18th and 19th century, for example. So talking about that, I'd like to illustrate a few examples that validate this artistic production's worth. For example, Jose Campeche, who was coincidentally, uh, coincidentally a Puerto Rican, but he was considered to be the America's most renowned painter during the 18th uh, century. He was a Rococo style and neoclassical style painter. Another Puerto Rican, Francisco Oyer, one of the few Caribbean artists to be part of the Impressionist movement at the end of the 19th century. The Mexican muralist from the 1920s, Frida Kahlo, who doesn't need an introduction. Jesus Rafael Soto, the Venezuelan. Jean-Michel Basquiat. Felix Gonzalez Torres, a conceptual Cuban artist who lived in, in Puerto Rico actually and died in New York. Leon Ferrari, the Argentinian. And recent prestigious, renowned publications like the Junger Dan Jesus catalog from the New Museum and Fiden's Art Cities of the Future, which include Latin American artists and Latin American cities like San Juan, for example. So the worth is evident. What's the problem then? The main problem is modern art vulnerability or frailty. Why? And this is something that regards to all modern artistic production, not just in Latin America tends to be very experimental, at times even ephemeral, usually has an important conceptual weight. So we conservators are at, are at risk of committing uh, mistakes if we are not well informed about the significance, symbol, or conceptual weight that the artist has uh, has given to the materials he or she is using. And this is particularly true in Latin American countries. There usually is not enough money to help preserve and restore our artistic legacy. And conservation usually is very expensive. So a possible solution what could it be? I just mentioned that Pedal embraces a methodology that dates back to the early 20th century. Actually, it was first uh, practiced by German conservators who were dealing with vanguardist artists and works such as Cubist paintings, um, many of which had notes written by the artist on the back of the of of the support or, or the, the fabric stating that this painting should not be varnished, for example. And those were uh, written questionnaires sent by mail to, to the artist. And it became known, this practice, as conservation through documentation. It has evidently evolved through time. And there, um, there's usually no written questionnaires, but video recorded interviews. Many of the most important museums in the world practice the artist, what is known as the artist uh, interview. And it is also considered to be like a, a new kind of art history, since a lot of information um, um, is obtained via this exchange and conversation with the artists, who are the most important source of information, since they are the primary information. So that's the point of departure, the artists, and having access to the, the artists, of course. 
since we are talking about experimental contemporary art, the artists are usually alive. So even a, a, a legal component comes in because we have to go to the artists in many of these instances before doing any intervention to, to their work. This has a preventive character. And since I was just saying that conservation restoration usually is very expensive, if we stop the, the artwork from deteriorating, we are usually saving money. So this is cost effective. And finally, this documentation could end up being the only remnant of many of these works, which are destined, destined to, to disappear because they're too, too, too um, frail. And maybe the artist's intent wasn't that the work ended up disappearing, but it's something that we, we cannot stop from happening. And in those cases or those instances, to think of this documentation as the surviving, the only surviving remnant of the artwork, even um, substituting, substituting the, the artwork is, is very exciting and interesting too. So this is where Pedal comes in. Pedal is a pioneering project since it's the first of its kind to focus on Latin American artists and to document them, interview them in Spanish. Uh, language is so important. It lets us, lets us communicate adequately, but also for us, for everyone, it's a part of our identity. It is housed in a university museum, which gives it another um, Hue, let's say it in that way, since it gives the project access to the academic community, which has so much to, to offer. Usually these projects, the pre-existing conservation through documentation projects in other parts of the world are housed in museums that are not, not part of a, a university. So that, op that opens up many possibilities. Actually, Pedal, uh, is already part of a network of other projects of its kind and museums. We already have um, a partnership with uh, the Menil Collection in Houston and the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York. Actually, the Menil was the first museum to house and develop an artist interview project with this purpose. And we also um, aspire to collaborate with museums in Central and, and South America and the Caribbean basin, of course. Another important aspect of PEDAL and such projects is that they offer a repository of information and data. Their web pages are databases, which house and preserve in another way very crucial, important information that it's not only valuable for conservators, but for other artists who are experimenting with similar techniques, for example, and other um, researchers such as art historians, registrars, museum registrars, and even filmmakers that can benefit from this uh, footage and turn it into movies, artist movies. Well, Pedal um, brings, brings in uh, a program since it is part of a uh, university environment, it wishes to involve the student community and wishes to teach and develop new specialists in this field. But it also contemplate, contemplates the, the making of art exhibitions that illustrate the results of this interesting research and documentation and other activities such as workshops, for example, a workshop on how to use the art artist registry digital tool. Well, where's where's Pedal right now? At what point of its evolution? Well, first thing 
is that it mirrors, although it brings new things, the artist documentation program that was started at the Manil in Houston and is now part of a collaboration with the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York. This is an, Im an image of its web page, and you can see different artist names and images of, of their artwork. These interviews include their transcription and also subject, subject time coded indexes. Well, Pedal has already documented Nina Baez, this lady here, considered to be Puerto Rico's most, most renowned female artist of all time. This was a conversation we had in the Museo de Arte de Ponce Conservation Laboratory. We were looking at her painting uh, with ultra um, violet light, black light, ultraviolet light, under ultraviolet light. We already documented Celia Sanchez, a very um, renowned Cuban artist known for her combined paintings between sculpture and painting. Here you can see us with her assistant. And this was a uh, documentation that opened the door to talk to the artist assistant, who is a very important figure for us, uh, conservation through documentation specialist. Also Celia is over 90 years old. So having the, the support of her assistant was crucial. And most recently, we've just documented Daniel Lintramo's work. He's a Puerto Rican uh, sculptor. This is a work by him, an assemblage. He works with many recovered uh, and organic uh, materials and objects. And this is not him. This is Angel Santiago, an objects conservator. So this documentation brought the, the space for us to document uh, another conservation specialist. Since assemblage is not necessarily my forte, and it was a, a very uh, interesting learning experience. Also, this and and, and it brings a, a new edge to the practice, since other projects aren't necessarily documenting uh, specialists in conservation when documenting an artist um, work. Well, since I'm talking about the conservation specialists, it's, it's important to point out that we've um, realized that when we go to the artists to document the materials, the techniques, uh, how were they employed and why, where did they came from, usually artists, and it doesn't have to do necessarily with their age, doesn't remember. They don't remember uh, if a certain amount of time has gone by. They, they don't often don't remember many of, of these facts. So we started developing a tool that would allow artists to document such things, mainly the materials, um, during the process of making the work or immediately after finishing it. So we could start documenting this uh, before by the artists themselves, or their assistants or close associate before it was time for us to go to them. Usually when we put this method into practice is when the artist is already well known and has been working for many years. So it is very common for them to, to forget. So we, we wanted to empower artists and make them our collaborators, collaborators even many years before we were going to sit down and have this conversation and make these interviews. And that's what I wanted to, to illustrate through a very brief uh, demonstration. This is uh, an image of the Registro del Arte Contemporáneo ORRAC, the Contemporary Art Registry. And it's a digital questionnaire that mirrors um, questionnaires that, that we find in the internet, for example, is very user, uh, very user friendly. And I will proceed to show you a tutorial that we also made because we want to be certain, sure, that everyone that uses this registry is able to fill it out uh, correctly because standardizing information uh, is also very important for this uh, practice. 
this image shows you some hotspot boxes with um, um, some instructions. Also, you can see some Word document icons that are attached, pre-designed tables that permit uh, the one that's filling out the, the questionnaire to include more detail um, information. If, for example, preparación is the ground for a painting, if the ground was prepared by the artist and not bought commercially, well, it's important to, to know what went into it and, and in what proportion. It's um, alphabetically, alphabetically um, organized. And when we are talking about brands, it includes basically every brand that's, that's out there. So I'm gonna share the tutorial and make a few comments while we are looking at it and hope not, not to, to bore you. Okay, here we are. Let me make sure that it's in fast forward. Yeah, it is. Okay, well, the first thing is the technical data fields. For example, the work's title, its dimensions, the date in which it was made, the artist, or artists in plural, if there's more than one. Also, there's uh, a field for the name of the one that's filling out the questionnaire or the registry, but it's not necessarily the, the artist. And we'd like to know what, what the relationship with the artist was and when was this uh, filled out. Here you're looking at the hotspots, you open the, the table. If this wasn't a commercial material that was bought but prepared by, by the artist. And this is the painting registry. So for example, pigment that was used. And there's the brand and the color, of course. But then it's also important to point out the product number and the catalog reference number. Then the, the second column pertains to the binding material. And the last one is uh, the proportion in which both were, were used or, or employed. I'm gonna fast forward this so we can get back to the registry. Then if, if you added um, other materials, this is a mixed media painting, for example, it's not just acrylic, but it has marble dust, for example. And the artist also added some fabric. And if the name of the fabric or the material is not included in the list, in the scroll down list, you can manually add those materials. This is the support field with um, fabric. There's the brand, a Daniel Smith cotton, cotton dock, and there's the number. And then the ground. But there's also uh, a Word document if the ground was prepared by, by the artist. And then the varnish. And the type of finish the artist wishes its work has, like if it's, it's a matte varnish or if it's glossy. And then you saw the attachment fields. This permits the, the artist or the one that's filling out the, the, the registry to add any information, any additional information he or she wishes, like for example, pictures of the work after it was finished. So you see Nagasaki. Um, or you can even attach, and it's important to point out the, the title you're given to that attachment, a general photo of the, of the painting, of the work. You can also attach uh, videos, for example. If, if you have any video documentation of your working process that's valuable and you want to add it to, to the registry, that's also a, an option. And there you have the, the example. So 
this is the the tutorial for the, the registry and basically what I wanted to to share with you as part of my my webinar and, and presentation. Eventually, Pedal will have its uh, own web page. We are in the process of designing it. And as part of its web page, we'd like to include, and this is very innovative, none other uh, projects of this nature have it. We'd like to add a section for the rack for artists to download the templates. The templates for other media are on, it, on their way also, new media, sculpture, uh, and so forth. But we are also contemplating um, the possibility of allowing our um, artists to upload, the uploading of the already filled out uh, questionnaires or registries. Um, this is a sensible um, subject because not every artist wants to share this intimate technical information of the work with a general public, but maybe this could be made available uh, eventually, after the artist has passed away, for example, or not, or not. Many artists are, are willing uh, to, to share this information and we'd like our web, web page and repository to also be the, the, to also house and help preserve these valuable uh, documents. Well, before finishing, I'd like to thank again the Universidad Ana Jiménez, its museum, Museo y Centro de Estudios Humanísticos, Dr. Josefina Camacho de, de la Nuez, our chancellor, Dr. David Mendez, for the support he has given the museum and, and myself to be part of this uh, Ars Electronica Fest. And also a special thank again to the Fideicomiso de Ciencia, Tecnología e Investigación de Puerto Rico, to its uh, executive director, Luz Crespo, to Dr. Johnny Lugo, its innovation uh, cultural Innovation um, Heritage Program Director and to the Technology Specialist of that program, Ms. Uh, Mrs. Shirley McFall, who helped uh, record and edit this webinar that I hope you liked and is of good use to, to all of you. So thank you again very much for, for your attention and for your, for your patience. Thank you so much, Dr. Aceves, for that wonderful presentation. Uh, we're gonna jump right into our q and I have a cat who's being very, very... Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation, Dr. Aceves. Uh, we're just gonna jump right in to our Q&A, um, so let's go. <laughs> 